governor wa jimbo letu la Mombasa governor Ali Hassan Joho rais wa chama cha secondary school heads association Mr. Imudili Kai viongozi wa timu paletu jambo hamjambo tena wakati unafunga ukiwa unafunga na unaangalia wengine wakikupa hiyo maombi yako inaenda direct kwa hivyo chunga hii watu jameni unasikia hii sauti yao bado iko chini labda ni njaa ndugu yangu eh walimu oye asante ni sana let me say that it is great to see you all again today and I'm pleased really after a two year break due to the COVID-19 pandemic we can finally once again meet in person all of us our education fraternity the whole country has experienced widespread disruption in our lives during the last two years and I am aware of the fact that even amongst this forum, you too have lost some of your members to the unfortunate coronavirus. I take this opportunity on my own behalf, on behalf of the government and people of Kenya, to convey to you all our heartfelt condolences and to the families of members of this association and in honor of all those from this association and the many other Kenyans who lost their lives during these two years of pandemic, I request all of you to be upstanding so that you deserve a one minute of silence in their honor today. Asante ni sana. Ladies and gentlemen, our education sector was hard hit by the pandemic. Indeed, between March of 2020 and January of 2021, when our schools remained closed, the education process was disrupted, affecting about 17 million of our learners. But today, I am glad to note that despite the challenge, our teachers tirelessly facilitated learning during that period through a variety of measures such as radio broadcasts, online learning platforms, and group consultations. Indeed, today Kenya owes you a debt of gratitude for remaining true to your calling despite the disputed and disrupted learning environment and the adjusted school calendar. Indeed, throughout Kenya's history, teachers have continued to occupy a special place in the upbringing of our children. Teachers are builders of dreams, the crafters of careers, the discoverers of hidden talents, and the shining beacons that set a positive example within our local communities. Indeed, many decades after some of us have finished school, we still remember and treasure the teachers who contributed so much 
to making us who we are today. But let me say that never has the role of the teacher been as important as it is today as we recover from this COVID-19 disruptions. Despite government's efforts to keep pupils learning during the pandemic, many of them lost momentum, mainly because of poor learning environments. The pandemic, unfortunately, also widened education inequality and also led to an increase in teenage pregnancies as well as school dropout. Going forward, therefore, you, the teacher, must be a linchpin of the recovery process in this education sector, as well as in the overall social economic recovery journey. We are counting on you, our teachers, to help our learners recover the learning losses incurred during the pandemic, and to ensure that all those who have dropped out get back to school, rebuild momentum on the education sector reforms that stalled during the pandemic, and more importantly, build on lessons learned during the pandemic to make our education sector that much more resilient. I am confident that you do not only have the capacity, but I also believe the will to rise to this challenge. And I am confident because I do believe that our teachers have proved to be amongst the finest in the world, considering only just three examples of teachers who have put Kenya on the global map. And allow me to mention today, once again, Peter Tabichi, from Keriko Secondary School in Nakuru County, who emerged the winner of the Global Teacher Award in 2019. Mr. Eric Ademba, a teacher from Asumbi Girls Secondary School in Homa Bay County, who emerged the Continental Teacher of the Year in 2019 and the award organized by the African Union, an award organized by the African Union, while Jane Kimiti, the chief principal of Othaya Girls in Yeri County, also scooped the same award in the year 2020. To now Apongeza, this is just an example of the hard work that you had teachers put into ensuring the future of our children. So ladies and gentlemen, today we note that the theme of this conference is re-examining our future together, a new era of education in Kenya. And I do believe that this is an appropriate theme because we are indeed at an inflection point and we need to ensure that we do not lose the gains of the last 60 years. At the same time, the pandemic has also created opportunities for us to reimagine our education system and to transform it to meet future challenges. As we engage on the future of education, let us take a moment also to recall where we have come from. I am indeed proud of the gains that we have made in broadening access, especially in secondary education. Enrollment in our secondary schools has more than doubled, increasing from 1.3 million in the year 2008 to nearly 3.6 million in 2022. The 100% transition policy has ensured that all our learners who sit the KCPE examination obtain a place in a secondary school, and this has been a huge success. Since 2018, more than 90% of those who sat the KCPE transitioned to a secondary school. And it is notable that since day secondary education is free, over 70% of them are enrolled in our day schools. Second, to ensure that no child is left behind because of their social economic background, my administration has increased capitation by child 
per child in secondary schools to Kenya shillings 22,244. Furthermore, support is provided to needy students through various scholarship programs, for example, the one that has just been mentioned today, the Elimu Scholarship Program, which provides bursaries for bright but needy students. The government has also, in partnership with Equity Group Foundation, awarded approximately 9,000 scholarships for the 2019 KCPE candidates and an additional 9,000 scholarships for the 2020 KCPE candidates who joined Form 1 in July of 2021. In addition, the JKF scholarship program has also benefited over 4,500 needy students since 2013. The third aspect is that we are also reforming our education system to make it fit for purpose in the 21st century. Following the recommendation of various task force forces, my administration initiated the competency-based curriculum reforms in 2016. CBC seeks to, number one, identify and nurture every learner's potential. Secondly, to emphasize practical learning as opposed to theoretical teaching. Thirdly, to emphasize application of knowledge and acquisition of competencies as opposed to just routine memorization of content. Fourthly, to provide opportunities for acquisition of values and participation in community service learning. Fifth, to provide pathways and tracks in senior secondary school that are aligned to the broad abilities and career interests of learners. And lastly, to balance formative and summative assessments in all our training curricula. The rollout of the CBC curriculum is on course. And indeed, when schools reopen next week, we shall have more than 9 million learners under the CBC curriculum. The next point is that my administration has also progressively expanded education infrastructure to accommodate the growing environment. This includes classrooms, desks, and chairs, as well as electricity connectivity. Indeed, since 2013, over 90% of our schools have been connected to the national electricity grid, while some of our schools in off-grid areas have been provided with solar installations. In keeping with my pronouncement during the Mashuja Day of 2021, regarding the building of an additional 10,000 classrooms to support the establishment of junior secondary schools, I am pleased to inform you that so far, 6,470 classrooms are due for completion by the end of this month and the remaining classrooms will be completed in the second phase of the program. Point number five is that we have also remained focused on education quality. My administration has provided free books to every child and we as a country have now achieved a pupil-to-book ratio of one in all our public and secondary, primary and secondary schools. Indeed, recognizing the centrality of teachers in raising education quality, we have also invested in a robust teacher training program and provided the budgetary allocation for teachers as raising it from Kenya shillings 116.4 billion in 2013 to Kenya shillings 288.6 billion in the current financial year. 
we have hired a total of a, a total of 120 153,000 teachers since 2013 and institutionalized the internship program within the TSC supported a transparent and accountable promotion system for teachers and also introduced a comprehensive medical cover for all teachers and their dependents. We have also implemented reforms in the administration of our national exams, and today we can see the results of some of those reforms. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, so to drive our education boldly into the 21st century, my administration initiated the digital learning program in 2013. And through DLP, public primary schools receive teacher and learner digital devices, digital content servers, and wireless rotors and projectors. A total of 21,717 out of 22,988 primary schools have been supplied with these digital devices. We seek to ensure that by the time the student gets into secondary school, they are digitally literate and can harness digital technologies to broaden their learning experience beyond their immediate learning environment. So ladies and gentlemen, we can confidently and proudly say that with such strong education foundations, our future is secure. The heavy education investments are paying off. Indeed, our education system is today recognized as one of the best on the African continent, and our students obtain some of the highest scores in regional standardized tests, and indeed our young people are highly competitive in regional and global labor markets, thanks to our efforts. As we reflect and embark on a new education era, we can use these foundations as a major springboard for the future. The world faces major global challenges, some that are of an existential nature. They include pandemics such as the one we are trying to emerge from, that is COVID-19, climate change and biodiversity loss, huge intra and inter country poverty and inequality, as well as, as well as major disruptions of peace and security. To successfully manage the uncertain future requires individuals who are adaptive and resilient, who can adeptly apply their knowledge to new situations, who sees crisis as opportunities for innovation, and who have a thirst for learning and growing throughout their lives. To equip our young people with these skills requires a major transformation of our education systems. This is a new education course that we need to chart, and it is my hope and expectation that you will together deliberate on this during this week. As I conclude my remarks, I want to once again reiterate that my administration recognizes the important role that teachers play in advancing our development agenda. And in this regard, Bwana Mwalimu as we exit, and as Madaraka Day 2022 approaches, I look forward to awarding national honors to outstanding and transformative teachers from the education sector, those who have distinguished themselves through superlative services to Kenya, and I therefore, through you, Bwana Chair, invite you to forward to the National Honors and Awards Committee, through the Cabinet Secretary for Education, suitable nominees for national honors and awards that will represent the very best of education in Kenya.
Kwa hayo mabachache basi mimi nawatakia nyote kila laheri. Tumefanya sisi kulingana na uwezo wetu. Haja yetu ni kuhakikisha ya kwamba tumeweka msingi msingi wa kudumu na msingi ambao hauwezi kutingizika kwa watoto ambao ndio tuwaangalia kesho wawe viongozi wetu wawe wale ambao watasimamia eh, various institutions wale ambao watakuwa mawakili wetu wale ambao watakuwa maengineer wetu wale watakuwa walimu wetu wale watakuwa madaktari na wale pia kwa sababu kwa muda mrefu tumefunza watoto yetu ya kwamba kufanya kazi na mikono ni kama ni kitu kibaya tuwataka watoto wetu wajue ya kwamba ukiwa Mwenyezi Mungu amekubariki na kipawa cha kuwa welder mzuri, kukuwa plama mzuri, kukuwa mkulima mzuri. All these are much needed efforts and services that a country that is developing requires. And we must start moving away from telling our children that the only job you can have at is a white collar job atikuwa clerk kwa benki. Benki sasa zinaenda digital jameni. Leo hii kuna wakulima ambao wanatengeneza pesa hata kushinda nyinyi walimu, kushinda madaktari, kushinda maprofesa. Ama hamuelewi hiyo jameni. Leo hii as we progress in ship building tunatafuta quality welders na wale wachache ambao tuko nao wengi ni wazee ambao walifundishwa zamani na hata wale ambao tumepartner na wao kwa sababu wanaona kazi ya hawa wazee wanasema wakimaliza kujenga huko Kisumu na hapa Mombasa wanajaribu kuwa poach warudi na wao huko kwao kwa sababu ya quality ya service yao these are paying jobs this is where we need to take our children to encourage our children use that gift that god has given you whatever it is that is the future naambianga wengi angalia mabilionea hawa wakina bill gates na wengine wali drop out of high school na leo hii pesa ile wako nazo inashinda pesa ya Kenya tukijumuisha na ya Uganda ya Tanzania ya Rwanda ya Burundi na mtu hakumaliza high school eh yeah? tunaelewana wenzangu so sio kusema tu ati ni hiyo it is your responsibility to help our children eke out what is best in them because god has given each and every one of us a gift and you teachers are privileged to be the ones who are supposed to pull that gift out of that child and to make him use that gift to benefit himself to grow society to develop his country to develop his continent and to be proud of himself as a citizen of the republic for the service that he delivers whatever that service may be sina namna hiyo wenzangu sasa za yameni muziseme mimi nimewasaidia wewe muandika walimu mshahara niliongeza yameni mko na insurance ah Pigeni kelele kwa wale ambao watakuja lakini mimi munipigie makofi kwa yale nimefanya. Ama ni namna gani jameni? Ama ni namna gani? Eh tumeset msingi wengine wajenge. Lakini shida ya Kenya hii na ndio naambia mufundishe watoto. Shida ya siku hizi Kenya hii kiongozi anajua ku identify problem lakini hana suluhu yake. So akiona kwa gazeti leo unamuona kwa press conference oh bei ya mahindi oh bei ya mafuta sasa jameni unatafuta uongozi si kwanza utengeneze ile ambao uko naye unaenda kupiga nduru unapiga nduru why do you want to be a leader si uachie basi wale wanataka kufanya kazi waendelee ama ni namna gani ah ah msiniletee bana eh <laughs> 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 This country needs problem so solvers. 
not problem talkers kuongea unaongea unaongea pale kwa soko unalia 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 sasa mwananchi anakuangalia anasema ehe sasa unataka mimi nifanye namna gani ehe unataka mimi nifanye namna gani we need people who are willing and committed to providing solutions because problems will never end utalala leo ukifikiri umesuluhisha ya jana uamuke upate ingine mbele yako tunaelewa na wenzangu that is the way of life so let us teach our people to be problem solvers to recognize that problems come but our objective our duty is to resolve those problems not to groan about them because they will always be there they will always be there eh kwa hivyo wenzangu mimi nasema Mungu awabariki kwa majadiliano mtakuwa naye muongee vyema mimi nitaendelea kusukuma joho hakikisha amewapeleka lunch hata kama anataka mimi nimsukumie kwa kitu kidogo nitamsukumia Asante tu kwa